It's never been so clear. This year's Super Bowl matchup between the Patriots and Rams is a showdown between the NFL's past and its future. Led by 24-year-old quarterback Jared Goff, the Rams and their 21st century offense will take on 41-year-old Tom Brady and the Patriots, who are in search of a record-tying sixth Super Bowl title. At 32, Sean McVay of the Rams, 15-3, will be the youngest Super Bowl coach. He'll be going against 66-year-old Bill Belichick, who is taking the Patriots 13-5 to their third straight title game, fourth in the last five years and ninth since 2002. That streak started against who else? The Rams. Back then, though, they were in St. Louis. New England came in as a two-touchdown underdog in 120-17. The Rams open as a one-point pick in this one, set for February. Three in Atlanta. Blown call, Zuerlein's 57-yard FG send Rams to Super Bowl New Orleans, a big comeback. A blown call. And, finally, a booming kick that sent the Los Angeles Rams to the Super Bowl. After rallying from an early 13-0 deficit, the Rams stunned the New Orleans Saints with Greg Zuerlein's 57-yard field goal in overtime for a 26-23 victory in the NFC Championship game Sunday, an outcome that might not have been possible without an egregious mistake by the officials in the closing minutes of regulation. Los Angeles cornerback Nickel Roby Coleman committed a blatant interference penalty with a helmet-to-helmet -helmet hit on Tommy Lee Lewis well before the pass arrived inside the five, forcing the Saints to settle for Will Lutz's 31-yard field goal that made it 23-20 with 141 left in regulation. Came to the sideline, looked at the football gods and was like, back quote, thank you, Roby Coleman said. I got away with one tonight, after the no-call, Jared Goff had enough time to lead the Rams down the field for Zuerlein's tying field goal, a 48-yarder with 15 seconds remaining, see full story. Patriots make third straight Super Bowl, top Chiefs in thriller Kansas City, Missouri. The New England Patriots are headed to their third straight Super Bowl, once more thanks to Tom Brady's brilliance. The five-time NFL champion guided the Patriots 75 yards after winning the overtime coin toss, and backup Rex Burkhead's two-yard TD lifted New England past Kansas City 37-31 for the AFC Championship Sunday night. The drive against an exhausted defense was reminiscent of when the Patriots beat Atlanta in the only Super Bowl to go to OT two years ago. New England 13-5 benefited from two critical replay reviews and made its ninth Super Bowl with Brady at quarterback and Bill Belichick as coach, see full story. Click here to download the MyTeams app by NBC Sports. Receive comprehensive coverage of your teams and stream the Flyers, Sixers and Phillies games easily on your device. More on the Eagles The Eagles season is over, but it's not the end of Rube's 10 random Eagles observations. The plan at running back Jason Peters' future, some surprising Tom Brady stats, it's all here. 1. How bad was Wentz this year? I keep hearing how bad Carson Wentz was this season, and while I agree he was inconsistent at times and generally too slow to get started, the bottom line is that even hampered by a knee that wasn't 100% and a broken bone in his back, he still had a higher passer rating than Jared Goff, Andrew Luck, Brady, Dak Prescott and Aaron Rodgers. He played 11 games and was very good in 9 of them, mediocre in 1 of them, Indianapolis, and terrible in 1 of them, New Orleans. Look for yourself at his season game by game. You'll be surprised. There's no doubt in my mind that with a full, healthy offseason, he'll be a top 5 QB in the NFL next year. The plan at running back We've talked a lot the last week about the Eagles running back situation, and I wrote about it a few days ago, I feel strongly that the Eagles need to attack running back with one of their second round picks, but that doesn't mean I wouldn't welcome a free agent as well. Honestly, I think the Eagles could use one of each. As far as I'm concerned, everybody currently on the roster with the exception of Corey Clement starts out fighting for a roster spot. They need to completely make over the position. Not one defensive coordinator in the NFL sat in a meeting this year and said, hey, we have to account for the Eagles running backs. They need weapons. 
3. Figuring out which free agents to keep It's interesting when you look at the list of the Eagles' 17 free agents that there's not one they have to bring back. There are a few you'd like back, a few who may be back simply because they're hurt and have nowhere else to go and a few who you wouldn't mind back if the price is right. But there's not one who the Eagles are desperate to keep. Even Brandon Graham, as much as most of us love him, is a 31-year-old defensive end who had four and a half sacks last year. What this does is give the Eagles a ton of leverage. They don't have to overpay to keep anybody. They can set a price, and if that guy wants more, they can move on. It's a real position of strength. For the curious case of Jordan Hickshakes is one of the more intriguing of those 17 free agents. He's only 27, and we've all seen what kind of player he can be when he's healthy. He actually had his best game of the year against the Saints last Sunday. But he can't stay on the field. If he had stayed healthy this year, he would have been a pretty sought-after linebacker in free agency. But nobody is giving him much of a bonus considering he's now missed significant time in three of his four NFL seasons, 21 of a possible 64 games in his career. I sure wouldn't get into a bidding war for a guy that misses a third of his team's games. But if nobody else wants him and you can bring him back at minimum wage or close to it, I'd do it in a second because the ability is there. 5. With the 25th pick in the draft, the Eagles stick. I'll be shocked if the Eagles don't go defensive line in the first round. 6. 1 for the fire Jim Schwartz crowd Take a look at the Eagles' five playoff opponents the last two years and how many points they averaged during the regular season and how many they scored against the Eagles. 2017 Falcons, averaged 22.1, scored 100 2017 Vikings, averaged 23.9, scored 70 2017 Patriots, averaged 28.6, scored 330 2018 Bears, averaged 26.3, scored 150 2018 Saints, averaged 31.5, scored 24 of the 5 scored at least 10 points fewer than their season average, and they averaged 9.5 points fewer per game against Schwartz's defense than during the regular season. The one team that increased was led by the greatest QB ever. Jim Johnson is the greatest defensive coordinator in Eagles history, and his units allowed 16.7 points per game in the playoffs, which from 2000 through 2008 was 4.4 points per game below the NFL average of 21.1. Schwartz's defenses have allowed 17.0 points per game in the playoffs in an era in which the scoring average is 22.5, so that's 5.5 points per game below the average. 7 Some surprising Brady stats Check out Brady's history in road playoff games, he's thrown just 8 TDs with 8 INTs and completed 57% of his passes in 7 career road games. He's lost his last 3 road playoff games and hasn't won on the road in the postseason since 2006, when the Patriots beat the Chargers, 24-21, in San Diego. He's lost his last three road AFC Championship games and hasn't won a conference title game on the road since 2004 in Pittsburgh. Mark Sanchez has more career road playoff wins than Brady. David Garrard has a higher road postseason passer rating, Donovan McNabb has more road playoff touchdowns. Brady's career postseason passer rating is 93.1 in Foxborough, where he's 20-3. At neutral sites, it's 98.0 and he's 5-3. On the road, it's 75.9 and he's 3-4. 8. Pondering Peters' future The more I think about it, the more convinced I am Peters will be back at left tackle next year. Peters, who turns 37 next week, did leave some games early this year, but he also played 973 snaps, 80% of all the Eagles' offensive snaps this year. When he was out there, he was solid, and although it's not ideal, I'll take Peters 80% of the time over anybody else. The Eagles would save about $5.1 million in cap space by releasing him, but Peters' 2019 salary, $7.75 million, is middle of the pack for left tackles and certainly not prohibitive. 
Palapalavati Vitae isn't the answer. Jordan Mylop is a year away. It's easy to say the Eagles should move on from him. It's a lot harder to explain how. 9 on Alshon Jeffrey and the intercept Shoney was thinking about the Saints' playoff game and what the Eagles' chances would have been if Jeffrey had caught that pass. It'd have probably given the Eagles a 3rd and 5 at the Saints' 22-yard line. The Eagles were 7 for 17 this year on 3rd and 5, which is 41%, and they were also 1 for 2 on 4th and 5. So they basically had two 50% chances to convert, which is a 75% shot. Now, what if they had a 1st and 10 on the opposing 20? That happened 6 times this year, and the Eagles scored 3 TDs and 3 field goals on those drives. Of course they wouldn't have attempted a field goal this time, and they kicked the field goals on 4th and 8, 4th and 13 and 4th and 15, so I'm going to say it's a 50% proposition to score a touchdown with a 1st and 10 on the opposing 20. Factor in that the Saints were 23rd in the NFL in red zone defense in Foles' career red zone numbers, 41 TDs, 5 INTs, and my entirely non-scientific conclusion is that, if converting a 3rd and 5 with Two chances is a 75% chance and then getting 7 points from 20 yards out is a 50% chance the Eagles had about a 38% chance to win if Jeffrey caught the ball. It would have been fun to watch Nick Foles try, but the odds were against the Eagles even if he caught it. 10 predictions, I'm going with both home teams today. Chiefs 37, Patriots 33, and Saints 31, Rams 27, click here to download the MyTeams app by NBC Sports. Receive comprehensive coverage of your teams and stream the Flyers, Sixers and Phillies games easily on your device. More on the Eagles The Eagles are doing right by Nick Foles at least one more time, remember when Foles got knocked out of the Eagles' Week 17 game against the Redskins and finished just a few snaps shy of reaching a $1 million bonus, well, the Eagles gave it to him anyway. League source confirmed an ESPN report Saturday that the Eagles dished out the $1 million to Foles despite him coming a few snaps shy of earning it naturally, thanks to getting knocked out of that Washington game. Foles finished the regular season with 357 offensive snaps out of 1,092 to 32.629%. He needed to get to 33% to earn that bonus. Normally in these cases, there's no rounding up, this is not a normal case, because after Foles left the Week 17 game, he came back the next week and led the Eagles to a win over the Bears in Chicago in the Wild Card round and played the following week in the Divisional round. In the last two years, Foles has a 4-1 record in the playoffs for the Birds, this is a nice gesture but it doesn't change anything about Foles' future. The Eagles are still tying themselves to Carson Wentz long-term, which means it's still likely Foles will be moving on, either as a free agent or through a trade. We explored all those possibilities here. During the Eagles' year-end press conference earlier this week, I asked Howie Roseman about how much they have to factor in Foles' thoughts and feelings when making a decision, it's always gotta be what's best for our football team and the Philadelphia Eagles. We gotta make decisions based on that but there's also a respect factor for guys that have done a lot for us and have been a part of it. We try to factor that in as well. The bottom line is we gotta do what's best for our football team to win games going forward. It seems like we're seeing some of that respect factor with the move to give Foles the $1 million he fell just short of earning naturally. In the Eagles' eyes, he clearly deserves this bump, sort of like how he deserved a new contract before the 2018 season after his postseason heroics. The Eagles have to do what's best for the team, but they don't want to burn any bridges with a Super Bowl hero along the way either. Click here to download the My Teams app by NBC Sports. Receive comprehensive coverage of your teams and stream the Flyers, Sixers and Phillies games easily on your device. More on the Eagles.